you are about to see a Fix It Friday video where an it person with very little technical skill or knowledge would attempt to fix something. This is not a how-to video and is likely to be factually incorrect and at times possibly dangerous. Please don't copy Kip and see this video for limited entertainment purposes only. Roll titles! Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. Now today's Fix It Friday is going to be something a little bit different. We're not actually going to be fixing something, or sort of. We're going to be making something better and that something is my Atari 2600 console that I've got. But I've already performed a cap kit on it and that worked perfectly. But something I've really wanted to do for ages now is install an RGB mod and today is the day for that. So uh, here is that mod. Uh, yeah, uh, basically I got it from a place called Old School Consoles. It was around about £60. They don't often have stock of them, but I'd recommend emailing the chap there and seeing if he can get any stock for you. But yeah, this is the RGB mod kit and it comes with this sort of main board here. We've got a few replacement components, a bit of wire, some plugs for the RGB out connector that we're going to add. And then we've got some sockets for some chips and a sort of daughter boardy thing. But basically, the idea of this is this extracts the red, green, and blue and sync video signals directly from the Atari 2600 and processes them and feeds them straight out into a SCART connector, essentially. Now, obviously, a SCART connector is quite an old connector still, but you can convert SCART quite easily to HDMI which is the plan for this. Because as you remember, at the moment, the Atari 2600 just puts the video out through an RF out connection, and basically, it's shit. It's terrible, it's really bad. By making our Atari 2600 have an RGB output, it means we can play games on the big screen, I can video capture games, I could stream games. It just makes the console have a bit more life left in it. So yeah, that is the plan. Now, it might be that you found this video by searching on YouTube because there's not actually all that many videos of this mod being performed, especially on the Six Switch UK version, which is the one that I've got. So thanks for joining me and maybe, eat well, even if you're not new here, do consider giving this video a like and a subscribe because there's gonna be a fair bit of work involved both doing this and editing it. So yeah, I'd really appreciate that. So yeah, that is what comes with the kit. Now what doesn't come with the kit is the actual SCART cable. I've got that somewhere around here, but I had to pay an additional, I think it was nearly 20 pounds for it. And I think it comes in a slight kit form where we have to build it up a bit, but We've not even done the mod yet, so we'll come to that later. I might even save that for a separate part. I don't know. Now, this is a Tim Worthington kit, and there are instructions online for how to do it directly from the man himself. So yeah, I'm gonna follow those instructions as I go along. I'll put a link in the video description to the instructions, just in case you need them. But bear in mind, I'm doing this on a PAL 6 switch console. If you've got an NTSC console, or a four switch console, then it might be slightly different. So just bear that in mind. The only thing I've learned is some of the components I did in the cap kit might need changing or replacing with components that came in this kit. I think maybe, we'll see. And also not all of these components are used, I don't think. I don't know, I, I, we'll find out as we go really. That's, that's the exciting thing about this. Right, so uh, yeah, there's the kit. Let's get out the Atari 2600. Anyway, while I'm getting all these screws out and getting it all undone, let's give a shout out to all those people who joined the channel. Now, if you join the channel, it actually means I can buy stuff like this RGB mod kit. So the more people that join, the more things I can buy and the more videos that I can make, and, you know, means I don't have to do the day job as much. So please do consider joining the channel. It would really help. But like I said earlier, even clicking on the like and subscribe would be just perfect. Anyway, let's whiz all these screws out and shout out the awesome people who have already joined the channel. 
So first up, click in that join badge. We've got the kit fans who are Matt Lovey's JRC Electrical for the Burbs, Mark C and Wayne Cornish. Then we've got those incredible early birds who are Roberta Gorosum, Dean Ball, Sean at Cablesmith Electrical, Wayne's Retro World, Tim Salt, Sorcerer Stan, Adventure Rachel and Jake. Then we've got those lovely kit lovers who are just simply the best and they are Bella Webster, Lawrence Stestix Fix and Richard R Blaster. Then we've got our gorgeous kit nutter. She's still here and she's still incredible. It is the amazing Becky Becky Boobar. Thank you so much, Becky. And here he is. Boom! We've got our kit mental and that is Ellis Garbutt who's been supporting the channel for a long time now. Thank you so much for being a kit mental, Ellis. It really is appreciated. Anyway, let's get back to the video and I think he's nearly done. So yeah, I know this looks pretty disgusting. We are going to give it a bit of a clean and restore as part of this project, but I'll do that nearer the end. So here is inside our console. Um, now most of what we need to concentrate on is under this shell here. So we need to pop this off. And we've got two screws either side there. Oh yeah, I've got the foamy guys knocking around that go on top of the joysticks. Didn't bother putting them back on. So that is that free. Aha. So yeah, this is our main area of interest. I'd really like to get myself a bigger mat to work on. So if any of you have seen like bigger mats, then please do let me know. So I'd really like to get one. Ah, more screws, of course. I mean, doing the cap kit on this did make me realize that it is actually quite a nice console to work on. The board isn't multi-layered and all complicated. It's relatively straightforward and what you see is what you get. So our main area of interest is here and this chip. And this is called a TIA. I don't know what TIA stands for, I'll put it on the screen. It would make me look clever, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that stands for, but this is the chip. Now, this one is different depending on if you've got a PAL or NTSC console, and that's why there's some variations. And also, thankfully, mine is socketed in a black socket. Now, if you've got a white socket, um, apparently that makes it a little bit of a pain in the, in the butt, and you have to remove that white socket and put in a black one like this one which comes in the kit thankfully okay so this board came with the kit and we've got to do a little bit of a test fit to make sure it fits roughly where this chip is this board will basically be going into the socket here we do have this green capacitor here which is sort of slightly in the way oh i don't know that's gonna be a bit tight now included in the kit, there is a smaller one of these capacitors. So I'm gonna quickly take out this green capacitor and replace it with this one that came in the kit. And actually, with this removed, I can get a little bit of leverage and get under there to get this chip out because this chip's got to come out. So let's fire up the old solder sucker and get this sucker taken out. So with that removed now, I can get in here and just sort of gently prise up the chip. You have to be really careful when you're taking these old chips out because if you snap a leg off, then you just get a whole new world of pain. So just a case of either using the correct tool to remove the chip. You can get IC removal tools. I don't have one. Perfect. There we go, that's all removed. Legs look roughly right. And yeah, this is going to sort of sit here, but I need to put this yellow guy in where the old one came out. So yeah, I'm just gonna bend it away a little bit and just quickly solder this in position. There we go, that's looking good. Bend it over slightly and it doesn't foul our board. Perfect. Okay, so we've got these guys included in the kit and basically 
we've got to put them through the motherboard position, so there and there. And the correct way around is so the long side is on the bottom, and then the smaller side is in the top. Now obviously you want to try and get these as square as possible because you don't want to put any undue pressure on anything. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit of flux along. And then I'm just going to tap in a little bit of solder on either end of the connector, just so we've sort of got it started, I guess. See, and that's the reason why I've just gone for one, like either end, because as you can see, that's a bit wonky. Yeah, that's a bit straighter. That's a bit straighter. So yeah, basically I've just got to whiz along all however many connections there are and uh, solder. So uh, one moment, please. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, a bit fluxy, but we'll clean that up in a moment. But I think that is roughly right. So yeah, same again with this second lot of connections. Just do a little blob on either end and uh, get it roughly square. <laughs> That's not very square. But if I just loosen up the solder. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So once again, got to run down all of the connections. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. It's roughly straight. Check roughly goes in the socket. Yeah, that's going to be all right. That's going to be okay. Right, just for a sort of sanity check, I'm going to make sure that there's continuity between here, the end of the pin, and here where it goes through to on the other side of the board. So far, so good. It's good to get this right first time because there will be parts of this that are inaccessible once you've done all the soldering. They will be accessible, but you'll have to undo pretty much everything you've done. So uh, yeah, it's good to get it right first time and make sure that it's working. Right, so now we're looking at this main board itself. As you can see, look, that's where the RGB signals will come out eventually. So now we've got to get these guys, which are the same size on each side of the black bit, and they've got to be soldered into this board. And I think, I'm correct in saying, these go where the white outlines are. Can you see there's white outlines there and there? So it goes like that and like that. Now, in a moment, we're going to have to solder the EEPROM socket through on this side as well. So it's going to get a little bit fiddly. But yeah, we've got to flip it over, solder all along here. So once again, it's going to be a very sort of rinse and repeat type thing. Just going to do the two end ones, make sure it's all straight, although it's a lot easier to get these smaller ones straighter, and then whiz along all of them. Yeah, it's a lot easier to get these small ones straight. So what I'm just gonna whiz through and solder all these connections. You don't need to see that, it just takes ages. So what I do is I just cut away and when we cut back, it'll all be soldered and we can then get the socket in position. So these guys are all in now and now it is time to put the socket in. Now I have actually put it in, I've not soldered it in. Now there's a little sort of cutout on top of it. There you go, you can just about see it. And that's got to line up with the sort of screen printed cutout there you go you can see that semicircle at the top of the board 
that denotes the way round the chip goes because we look at the chip, it's got this little uh, cut out bit at the top there. Now it is a bit of a squash and a squeeze to get the socket in position. The reason why I have actually just been playing with it off camera, that's what she said, yeah it is a bit of a squash and a squeeze to get it in. The tops of these pin guys sort of touch the top of here and it's a bit of a balancing act. Oh and also we've got to put another little socket on here. So actually I can show you that. So again, the little dink at the top lines up with the little dink on the screen printed bit. That one is a lot easier to get in and out. So I think basically how this works is we'll put, once this is all done, we put our original chip on top and I think we then solder this main board onto here like that. And then this basically goes in the original socket on the console and all the signals basically get passed through and all that jazz. So yeah, I've got to again whiz across with the soldering iron along there, along there and then put in the socket there. But yeah, it should be okay, he says confidently. Right, I think when getting there, <laughs> well certainly with this part of it anyway, so I've installed this socket, I need a little bit more cleaning under there but everything seems to test okay and I've installed this socket here as well. So now what we've got to do is take the board that we worked on first and basically put the two together like so. This is where we sort of really hope that everything is done correctly because it'll be a pain to desolder all of this and desolder everything else. But I think I think that look is going to work okay. So yeah, the last massive load of soldering is just these two lines here. And yeah, we can then start doing some bits and bobs with the rest of the Atari. Exciting. I'm going to whiz through these connections here and uh, get them soldered together. Okay, so we have our finished board. Well, there or thereabouts. Actually looks pretty good. I think everything's okay. I'm not gonna know until I put it all together. Okay, so now we've got to fit our little chip that came with the kit into our socket that we've installed. Like so. Nice. And then we've got to put our original chip that came out of the Atari back in. Now this is very, very fiddly, so it's just a case of taking it extremely slowly because, like earlier, you don't want to snap the legs off this. But equally, you have to get the legs in position and it requires a little bit of force. So yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of a balancing act. Oh, it's in. That's what she said. Yeah, very, very tight to push it in, but I think we're there. <sighs> yeah, I had to use the uh, spare socket that came with the kit and I kind of pushed that in on top and I think it kind of helped open the legs. This is just disgusting. Double entendre and I don't mean it to be for the first time in, well, forever. So yeah, that is our board now complete. Obviously we've got to wire the connections to the top here. Now there are some connections here that I'm not sure if I'm going to do. And basically they go to the joystick 
and it means that you can change the palette and reset the console and stuff by doing certain jiggery things on the joystick. I don't think I'm going to install that just because I don't think I really need it. I'm just all about the RGB. So I think what we've got to do is now put our new board into the old socket. And I mean, it should just go straight in. I mean, this is the point where you really hope that the legs that you put on right at the start are all straight. <laughs> right, after quite a few swear words and a lot of pushing, it is connected and in position and yeah, it all seems okay. So something else we need to do, but not on this board, is we need to change the voltage regulator. And that is on this board and is this guy here. Now we did change this voltage regulator when we did the recapping, but apparently we need a new one and this is included in the kit and this is for switch power supply I think so we need to remove this guy clean up around it and this is going to go in its place it's got a little thermal pad on the bottom now we also need to put a capacitor in as well somewhere it joins onto the legs so what we've got in the kit is this guy here and I think we put it on and solder it like that and the bent legs go down into our original board. So I'm just gonna quickly tin these three pads here so I can get this guy on. Okay, so the old regulator is removed. I've given it a bit of a clean. And this new switch mode power supply is going to go in a bit like that. Now we've got to put this capacitor in. So it says the positive pin of the capacitor should be connected to the I. So that's the longer leg. And then the negative pin of the capacitor should be connected to the G, which is ground. So. That is the shorter leg. So get this pad off the back so we can start getting it together roughly. There we go. So that goes in there like that. And then, yeah, we need to put the capacitor in. So the positive is on the I and the negative is on the G. So a bit like that. Just gonna quickly solder that. That all looks okay. Well, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna leave it here for today because this has taken hours. So all we've really got to do now is wire up the connector, I think, and that will make it work, maybe? Anyway, we'll see you back in a second. Okay, so now we need to start doing a bit of wiring up and that is wiring up the RGB connections and also the audio connections. Now the RGB connections and audio connections are here. Uh, so we've got ground and zero zero, which is the audio connections. So you've got left and right, even though it is mono, there's still a left and right connection. So it comes out of both speakers basically. Then we've got our RGB and then we've got our CS, which is the sync signal for the RGB SCART and then we've got a ground and five volts and the five volts is for the switching signal to basically force the TV to switch to the SCART channel. Not so much of a thing these days but we're going to wire it up anyway because it's one of the connections on the SCART cable and we'll talk a bit more about the SCART cable shortly. So what I need to do is put wires on for all of these connections and they are then going to go to a connector that's going to be at the back of the case. And the connector for the DIN is here. Can you see? There we go. It goes in through a hole on the case that we've got to make and then through the board and it's soldered on the back there. And then we've got little breakout connectors for the RGB and the five volts and the sink and the ground. Um, now what I think I'm going to do is because 
this is such an unknown quantity, and I've never done one of these before, and I'm not sure it's working, I am actually going to put it together and not put this through the case just yet because I want to test it. So it does mean that I'm going to have to solder the connector onto the board and then when I come to fit it in the case, unsolder it and put it through the case and then resolder it. It does add a little extra step, but at least this means before I put everything back together and tidy up all the cables and manage them and everything, we at least know the RGB mod is working. I'll save doing the sound connection. I just want to test that the video is working because I think if the video is working as it should, then the sound should be okay too. Now we need to put some wires on these solder pads here and um, I've got some already and they're all tinned at the tip. And then, yeah, we've got the other ends that will go onto this uh, little board here. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna start by putting some solder on all the different pads that I'm going to be using. So we've got our five volt, got our ground, got our CS. We've got our B from the RGB. We've got our green from the RGB. And we've got our red from the RGB. And then we've just got our ground and both the audio left and right. There we go. So those are our video wires wired in. Right, so I'm just gonna quickly put this, uh, put some solder on this connector. As I say, I will be having to unsolder it when I come to put this connector in the case, but I just wanna check it basically. Really small and fiddly to see, sorry. I mean, the next time I solder this, this is going to be in the case, so that's gonna be even more of a ball ache. So now we've just got to tap on the blue, green, red, sink, five volts and ground. So I'll just put a little blob of solder on each one of those. So let's start putting some wires on the connector. I mean, it's not the best soldering, it's not the prettiest, but it all kind of works. Now we need to get our head round the SCART cable. Now, I've actually built the SCART cable already, but I've done it over on my other channel, which is called Kip's Bits. And basically, it's a new channel where I'm just gonna put random stuff that I'm doing that's probably not all that good for the YouTube algorithm. People probably won't want to watch, but some of you might do. So now, we've got to test our working. Will be interesting. So let me... Um, set up everything and uh, we'll be back in a mo and we can see if this RGB mod has gone well so far. So behind me over there we've got the output of my SCART to HDMI adapter thing here and um, yeah we've got our connection that we just soldered here and we've got the SCART cable that I made in the other video here. So to really really gently there we go I'm actually really nervous. And we've got to plug in our SCART. Right, let's put some power into this. Right, and then we switch it on. That doesn't feel very good. Oh no. So something's working because we've got 
the LED lit up for the five volts. Hang on, do I have to change the input? That's a thing, isn't it? Press some buttons on here. It works, it really works. Oh my God. So there's no sound, but yes, that is working. Oh man, that is so good. That is so, so good. It looks amazing. There's a little bit of interference, only the tiniest bit, but it looks so much better. Right, good. So I think what we'll do now is we'll take all this out, we'll give the case a clean, and then we've got to fit this guy in the case properly and also get some audio. But we're on our way. Yes. So a job that I've kind of been putting off on this Atari is cleaning it because it is disgusting. Um, it just needs a really good clean. I did think about submerging it in some water and giving it a clean in the sink, but I'm a little bit concerned about this uh, veneer stuff here. I don't know how well it would cope with that. And also the back of the device has got its serial number sticker on and everything like that. And I don't really want to destroy those. So I think in the first instance, I'm gonna give it a good wipe down with some cleaning wipes. And I think I'm gonna use some IPA and a cotton bud on these disgusting avenues of filth. I will probably just speed through a lot of this because it's just a fat old man cleaning an old console. You don't necessarily need to see all of that. I mean, look at that, that is disgusting. I think when Vince did his Atari 2600, he sort of used a kind of paint pen to go around this orange bit, which I think I will do eventually. I mean, even that just looks so much better. I'm actually using these. I think they're really good. They're great in the kitchen. They smell really nice. And um, yeah, they, they're just a nice product. Right, so um, let's get a little sort of channel of IPA going. Do a couple of those. That is disgusting. I mean, you could just instantly see the difference between the sort of five or six rows that I've done compared to that lot. Yeah, see on the inside, it's not actually all that bad at all. It was just this um, top bit that's disgusting. Look, this comes out. So I might be able to get the Is that? No, I don't feel entirely confident popping that out. Let's uh, put a small blade down in. Yeah, that'll do. Might need like a second going over, but that is completely different to how it was. Pleased with that. Yeah, there's the bottom of the console. That's not nice, is it? What's that, you know? Proper look. Ooh. Please, if you are watching this video, give it a like if you haven't already. This has taken me a very long time and I'm not even finished, so. Please just hit that like button. It's free, doesn't cost you a penny. That will help push the video out to a wider audience of YouTube people who might be interested in this console or you know have one of their own that they might want to RGB mod.
Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but it is so much better. I'm pleased with that. That's a good start. I'll leave it all to dry. And if there's any sort of bits that need re-going over, then I'll do those off camera. Okay, so now we need to think about how we're going to mount the new connectors on the case. Now I have skipped something slightly here because I put the holes in already. Now I haven't done it on camera basically because I had to go outside because of the dust and mess and I didn't want to take the cameras outside. So uh, yeah, I've already drilled the holes. But what we've got here is a 12 mil hole and this is a six mil hole. It's actually slightly bit bigger, but the instructions say drill a six mil hole. Now when you cut the holes, you need to use something like this. And this is a stepped drill bit. I'm gonna put the link in the description to the set I got to do mine. But this went through the case like butter. It was so good. Now the reason you shouldn't use a normal twist drill bit is because it can crack the plastic. Now also something I've had to do, and again, I didn't film it because it was messy, is I've put this little sort of dink here in the metal casing for our wiring to go through. Because the main board is concealed in this metal cage, you need to make a little bit of an allowance for the cables. So I used a Dremel for that. So uh, yeah. Now going back to this, now what you have to do, because the case is actually quite thick plastic, the audio connector doesn't quite go through to be screwed in correctly. So what you need to do here, a bit difficult to see, but you need to make a slight lip. And they say in the instructions to do this with a 10 mil twist drill bit and use it by hand and basically scrape away a little bit of a bigger lip to make the connector go through into the case a little bit more. Now, I actually used the step drill bit very, very slowly to achieve that. And that seemed to work. But obviously, if you make one slight slip or you know you press your finger on the trigger too hard, you will go straight through. I'd recommend doing what they say though and using a twist drill bit and just scraping it out by hand. But yeah, there we go. So this will go into the case roughly like that. Now it doesn't actually clip into the case. We're gonna to need to use some epoxy glue to basically stick it in place on the other side. So I'm gonna do that. We'll have to come back once that's set before I can do all the soldering. The audio connector goes through like that. I think there's enough clearance for the washer. And then you put this twisty nut guy on top. And that's, that's a pretty good job. So yeah, we've got our audio connector sort of in place. I'm probably gonna take that out in a second anyway to uh, make sure I've got enough space to put the epoxy around. And yeah, that's just sort of waiting for some epoxy. Now I've worked it out that the connector should be this way around with the little hole guy at the top because when we come to put our board in, the wires are going to be coming out of the top because I don't think there's enough clearance for it to be the other way around because there's this lip here at the bottom. So yeah, I've just got to mix up some epoxy. So I imagine most of you know what epoxy is, but basically it's a sort of two part super glue thing. You put two things together, mix them together, and then they become a rock hard sort of plasticky glue. So there's a bit of hardener and you put a bit of the resin in meant to put about the same amount and then mix the two together. I've actually made way too much here, but you know, it's a bit clearer for you guys on camera. Right, so mix it together with these guys. Okay. And once this sets, it goes absolutely rock hard. So um, yeah, do this when you've got enough time to sort of concentrate and get it done in one hit because it also cures quite quickly as well. Right, okay. I want to try and make it as square as possible. Yeah, so I've just got my finger on it, holding it in position. It's a bit hard to see because it's all black in black. Okay, well, it's actually a bit later the same day and uh, this thing has set beautifully. It's not going anywhere. 
Well, I hope not. What's left to do? Okay, well, I've got the audio cables now soldered in position there, and I'm going to solder them onto the connector and then put the connector in the case. But first, we've got to get this board soldered on to our mini DIN connector and um, hope for the best. Now, I did think about trimming off some of this wire because there will be a bit of excess, but I think I'd rather have too much wire there. And if I needed to get back into the Atari at some point, I wouldn't have to desolder the connector to do some work on it. But essentially, I'm going to put this board back on like so and then solder all those little pins now i'm just going to jump cut to when they're done because yeah i've got to lean right over and it just looks terrible so let me get those done and um, we can get the audio connector wired up so it's a bit hard to see but yeah it's not the best soldering in the world but i think they should do Right, so now I've got to solder on the audio connections. I've got it in the little helping hands device. So the larger pin of the two is ground and then the smaller pins are the left and right. It doesn't matter which way round they go because it's just mono audio. Again, not the greatest soldering in the world, but it will do the job. Right, so I've just got to push this in. There you go. Not bad at all. So now we've just got to sort out this rat's nest of cables. So I want to kind of route them around like this. There we go. So that's roughly about right. Nearly there. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. I'm not gonna bother screwing it up for now because this video has gone on long enough. It will go back together just fine. I've taken this apart so many times. I just wanna get it working and make sure it does work. So let's get some stuff plugged in. So let's game, I'll make sure it's off. Perfect. Right, let me just set up the screen. Is it gonna work? <laughs> right, I guess I've gotta put in the power and find out. Okay, hopefully the no signal thing should disappear. Uh, hopefully. <gasps> there we go, wasn't plugged in properly. <laughs> right, let's see if we can have a game of Space Invaders. Oh my god, I can hear it as well. Oh. The picture quality is insane. I mean, I know it's an Atari 2600. It's not high definition by any stretch of the imagination. Oh my God, I am over the moon. Just look at the console and just think about how different it looked when I started it. And it's just so lovely. And that RGB mod is going to just mean that I can use this whenever I like. I don't need to worry about finding a TV that I can tune it into. It's just sorted. So I know this has been a really, really long video and I appreciate it if you've watched right to the end. Maybe put game over, man, if you've watched this bit. 
put game over man if you've got this far in the comments and I'll make sure I give you some love. <sighs> there we go. Right, well I've got to button it all up, but you don't need to see that. It works and that is the most important thing. We did it. We did it team. What's next? Well, I've still got the Firefox to repair. That's an old game. I need to go back to the game gears and look at those. And maybe I might even do an RGB mod on the NES that I've got. Yeah, this has taken me about a week to film. Not on uh, continuously, but it's taken me a very long time. And I'm just thankful it went without incident. So yeah, I don't think I've got anything else to say. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, it's game over.